Welcome everybody to our new interview with Hemp Engineering. I am Ramon Granados, we are broadcasting from Perth, Australia. Today we have the great pleasure to have uh, Mrs. Monica Brummer. She is an architect, she works in Morocco and she has developed uh, an architectural design uh, that is uncommon. It is uh, like a dome home, which is, is, is fitted with um, solar panels and they're built in North Africa. This is outstanding, Monica. Welcome. Uh, welcome. Uh, actually, I, I don't build exclusively in North Africa because I'm, uh, my base is in Spain. I'm European, I'm German, and I have a company called Canatectum in Spain. And I, I'm a co-founder of a Moroccan cooperative, which is called Adranur. Um, so I work between the two continents because uh, both Europe and Africa can maybe support each other or each other we can learn from each other to make from this something, think new about hemp. Because yeah. I'm already busy with hemp building since 1995. Wow. Uh, I, I, I started with it during my project final career in ar architecture because in that time in Germany it got... Um, uh, re-legalized, uh, let's say it was the year that uh, Germany started growing hemp again and it was in the mediums and uh, mm, a friend of mine listened to it and, and told me, oh, I saw that and that would be something for you. And and so I, I came to it during my project and I made the project final career completely out of hemp building material, hemp materials. Mm -hmm. uh, ev I used everything what I actually in that time I found in all kinds of different countries. And um, later I made still a master and a PhD on hemp concretes. Uh, and um, I, I didn't uh, separate from hemp anymore since then. And everything what I build or everything what I do has to do with hemp. But I touched all kinds of hemp materials, not only the hemp concrete, but also pre-made pre elements. I'm also a manufacturer of pre-made elements because I started in Spain a, a hemp brick factory in 1999. Oh, but wow. I didn't use... Yes. Um, and since so then... You're a truly I, I pioneer, Monica. Bricks. You're a truly yes. pioneer. <laughs> Yes, I think so, because I didn't start with hemp because I was thinking in business. Absolutely not. I started with hemp because I wanted to contribute to a better way of building or to a better better world. I'm only a little grain of that, you know, because uh, <laughs> what what am I against uh, the whole world? Nobody. But uh, everybody, every nobody needs to put his grain to make from this... Uh, an important thing. Uh, it's uh, even the promoters uh, and the cons and the builders, not only the architects, uh, need to understand what it is about to yes. uh, want more, uh, get the idea to use it. And the other thing, what I contributed, I think, to hand building is to use more local binders. For example, in Africa, I'm actually building a building uh, which is kilometer zero completely. The hemp is from next to the building, the, the clay is from next to the building, the stones are from next to the building, and the labor is, is um, very cheap in Africa, so the labor is the biggest energy resource which we have in Africa. So this building is the most kilometer zero I ever made. Not one material comes from more than 500 meters around the building. Wow. And everything is made by hand. Uh, Everything is made by hand. The, the bricks we made by hand, the, uh, the mortars we made by hand, the foundation we made by hand, mm, uh, uh, the, the wood we cut by hand for the roof. <laughs> we use some wood, but the, the hand bricks are, are load bearing because that's also my contribution to use the hemp as a, not only as a self bearing, but as a load bearing material. Oh, Why? Wow. Because I work in the south of Europe where we have very a lot of semi-arid and medi Mediterranean microclimates, which are very dry and wood isn't, isn't growing fast and there's a wood shortage. So from the beginning, I said, 
<clears throat> everybody is uh, building with hemp concrete, hemp and lime, and these wooden structures. And I want to come away from that because we need to make from this uh, load bearing material to to save the wood, to make it cheaper, and to um, also here in the south we don't have uh, specialists in bearing wooden structures. Also in Morocco, not. It's very difficult to find carpenters for mm -hmm. building carpenters oh, for carpentry of windows and so on and furniture yes but not carpenters of uh, of building so i noticed it very quickly in spain and i wanted to eliminate that problem and to use the the block like a load bearing one but then i found the difficulty when i add a lot of lime to that i i i, I make the brick very expensive i need to find other ways to to make the the material dense enough to uh, to also uh, um, be useful for a bearing capacity because in first place hemp concrete is a threefold porosity material yes. Yes. Uh, the por pores between the between the 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 the, the aggregates the pores inside the aggregate and the pores of the binder uh, Mm, the pores between the aggregate that we need to fill, otherwise we can't use it as a load bearing material because uh, mm, otherwise it's too elastic for that. Uh, and uh, we might can be build one store, but not three stores. I made up to three story load bearing buildings and I think it's possible to make five story load bearing buildings or 10 story load bearing buildings like buildings in Yemen, you know, the, 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 the loam architecture of Yemen, uh, you find there are, um, skyscrapers of clay building, you know, <laughs> and that's natural building. And I think now after my thesis, I'm fine enough to make the strongest hemp concrete material ever was found, even stronger than the magnesium oxide materials. Oh, and wow. uh, with more percentage of hemp than ever, and uh, I really want to uh, want to uh, to build up a factory with this material, but I still didn't find the right uh, the right partners for that. I'm I'm actually uh, trying to uh, trying to uh, put it <laughs> somewhere on the world to uh, <laughs> to get it in. Uh, Monica, but after listening to you, this brief and intense experience um, in my mind, mm. uh, it, I just see you in our expos, in Hemp Home Expo, and we are about Hemp to do, it. yes, and we are, we are about yeah. to do a um, Hemp African Summit in July. Really? And Oh, that's that's really something for yes. for, for Adranur. Okay, and we are at uh, twenty of April. We are going to do a Latin American summit as well. Also, oh, also great. I speak fluent Spanish, so yes. that's not a problem. Yes, I can see that <laughs> you are leading a path. I, I tell you this hum humbly. When I joined the um, revolution, mm -hmm. I have found a lot of smart people, a lot of smart people. Mm -hmm, what I mm -hmm. find, what I find in our business uh, is a lot of individual effort. There is not a exactly. coherent, coherent uh, path that we all can say we can mm -hmm. energize the industry. Um, exactly, I agree fully with it because everyone wants to be the first in his country and in his kitchen cook something what others cooked already 20 years earlier. And I really, I'm so tired of that because they are experts. Nowadays, you have a lot of hand building experts and excellent people. I mean, there are not a lot of excellent people, but um, I know at least something like 15 or 20 which are excellent hemp people, uh, which are the pioneering hemp people, yeah. and which have so much knowledge collected from experience or from scientific uh, research. And you know what is another problem? Science and practice never come together. And I'm one of the very, very few people who did all of them. I did architecture, I did, uh, I'm a, man a manufacturer of building materials with hemp, and I did the uh, science, scientific works. So- Plus the I fact that you are an architect, 
plus the I'm fact not... that plus the fact that you have put the hands, you have had hands on experience. I'm telling yes, exactly. you, I do I a lot of interviews around though. the world, Monica, and you have yes, blown out my mind. <laughs> Mm -hmm. But you know what is the p problem of all these people? Don't think that the whole world is contacting me. Over all the 27 uh, years I am busy with hand building, the, the whole world is contacting me. But everyone wants to, um, wants to have gratis knowledge or they want to have gratis advice. And I don't have time for all these people. I prefer to spend time on one project and make it, make it from zero till the end than to, um, you know, I, I often know to all these South Americans to call me and uh, Americans and uh, North Americans and um, from diff different European countries and so on. I tell people, OK, I can help you. But I can, can't replace the architect you don't have. Because most people think they can build just a house without yeah. an architect and make a kind of experiment. But they will make many, many mistakes. Many, many mistakes what an architect can avoid. Yes. Because uh, you don't study architecture for nothing. It's, uh, okay. it's minimum five years. It's more something like six years. And then, then when you still have a master and a PhD in hand building, then you, then you are an expert. And, you can avoid many problems people pay a lot of money for. Because I saw already many buildings bad done, which, uh, mm, let's say, make people lose money. Instead, when they had uh, done this with experts, they wouldn't have come to a better result. I absolutely agree, Monica. And one of my uh, pitching or preaching in the industry is that we need mm -hmm. to have a coherent supply chain Yes. And, a, and a positive engineering, procurement, and construction management methodology, oh, okay. where mm -hmm. you bring the architect that will basically design and uh, mm -hmm. draw the, the path of what the client wants or the project yeah. itself wants. And mm -hmm. then comes the engineers to build the specs of what the architect has done. It is exactly. very simple. And that's the only way that I see that the business can, can grow. I was lucky enough in, in my career uh, mm -hmm. that I started uh, when I was like 22 years old, uh, mm -hmm. when I graduated as an engineer. I was mm -hmm. selected by the oil and gas industry to, to become a planning and project controls engineer. So this field or this discipline within engineering was the one that allowed the oil and gas uh, business to grow exponentially because we learn how to put, I'm uh, sorry, not to put, to interface all disciplines so that we can deliver projects of this magnitude. Mm -hmm. This okay. experience has inspired me to uh, propose in the hemp industry that we should be building cities rather than eco-villages. Yes. Um, we have a project ongoing in Puerto Rico, mm -hmm. sort of now. <laughs> and we also have a project um, in Malaysia, uh, just mm -hmm. also to build a city out of hemp. Mm -hmm. um, okay. And we will need all kind of people there, believe me. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Maybe you yeah. can also show the different ways of building with hemp. Uh, for yes. example, uh, not only the hemp concrete, uh, you, there are so many other ways. For example, I made the sun implant building, but she, what you mentioned at the beginning, it is made with hemp fiber composite. And it's, I think, one of the, one of the only building, or maybe the, the only one who has hemp only hemp fiber in the composite and it's made with plant-based resins because normally the resins are not really ecologic and i really focused on the yes. ecologic ones uh, because i didn't want to and and i focused on to use no other synthetic uh, meshes inside the inside the panels and and the panels are kind of building skin external building skin and in the inside i have another building skin of hemp clay concrete compacted by students it was a completely it was a let's say a didactic building because the didactic activities are very important to make the future generation of architects yes. and so on also involved in the process and it was a very beautiful only we had very short in time and very short in um, 
in money. Uh, we only had the funding and we didn't get, that's also the problem. And all the other teams who build it with conventional building, uh, insulating materials like mineral wool and so on, they got a lot of sponsors. But we not because we were building with natural building materials from there, from the country. We didn't import things and we didn't buy things. We made it our own. So we didn't get sponsorings and we had a very hard, uh, it was a very hard project for me because I also had to do the work with the students and and that were all students of the first and second year and uh, and and mostly the girls the women and that's very interesting also that is the other so, issue yes agree the woman uh, the, there are not a lot of women in hand building yet but my clients here in spain who made houses from canna brick uh, it's the brick i uh, manufacture since a long while canna brick Canabrick is my brick, uh, my first brick. Now I can make a much better performing brick, but I still don't produce it because I still need some <laughs> financial means to make that happen. Uh, and uh, the most architects interested in that kind of buildings are women. Uh, I have really that uh, because after 20 years, uh, 22 years, I can say that because I observe it. <laughs> who is who are my clients and the most architects who build with Canabric are women and some repeated almost 20 times with my brick. <laughs> it's incredible. <laughs> yes, <laughs> uh, it's uh, mm, I, and Spain is also a country where what allows me to build load bearing houses with with my bricks because in germany that would be not uh, with the norms it would be not so yeah. easy mm -hmm. in spain it is possible in morocco it is possible as well but in um in, in some parts mm -hmm. of europe it is not an option because mm -hmm. of the norms mm -hmm. and um i find I find an extraordinary synergy monica you have a 360 degrees of the business you have been in the business long enough to, to teach anybody your experiences. I suppose. Extraordinary. I suppose, yes. I suppose extraordinary. yes. And and for example, in Africa, when I build a house, I don't get a European builder there to make it. I make it with the local people. And and that's not easy because you need to be next to them to tell them exactly the mix to control everything. I, I, I'm really there at the building side. I'm not an architect to make something on paper and then I'm gone. Uh, I, I'm the one who is at building side, and that's very important with this kind of building because people don't have yet the knowledge with the, or they lost the knowledge to work with natural building materials. And uh, but in Africa, what I observe, there are not these barriers what uh, what we have in Europe because in Europe a builder who sees that material says, oh, that looks like cow shit or that looks like you know they uh, they they have their they are. In, accommodated in their industrial materials, in their commercial materials. And when you come with something new, they have their doubts or they don't like to um, give you a budget or they don't, you know, or they refuse it for any reason. They're, they are not so open to that than African populations because mm. Africans are still much more uh, connected to the earth. Yes, that's very interesting. So they don't have these uh, pre-juices, uh, pre, uh, um, pre uh, yes. inter uh, exactly. Yes. Uh, exactly, exactly. Well, Monica, with this past experience in two continents, can you talk about the prohibition, your experience in the prohibition? I imagine it has been a headache all along these years. Right? Mm, uh, yes, in, in Morocco, you mean? Uh, no, in, in Spain, Europe no. and in Morocco, yes. Yes, no, in Spain it was not prohibited. Uh, and uh, when I came to Spain in 1997, uh, hemp was legal there, uh, uh, industrial hemp. And th there was there's one of the biggest hemp paper factories uh, um, which, uh, um, uh, which made hemp paper money, money paper for hemp, mm. from hemp. Uh, and all the Spanish hemp went there. But then afterwards there was a kind of, let's say, um, um, fraud of subsidies, uh, oh. uh, fraud. Uh, there was a kind of problem in Spain because uh, people uh, cultivated hemp only to get subsidies and later they burned it. So Spain got uh, excluded from the subsidies of the European Union for a while. Uh, and 
it didn't really recover from the, the up to the, and now it is busy with the CBD hemp and there's almost hardly any industrial hemp in Spain anymore so I got a really long while, while I was working with Spanish hemp and I was one of the first clients of the Spanish transformation industry which later moved back to France and now doesn't exist anymore and um, in Morocco, I have a completely other circumstances. I, I started, uh, I was more, let's say, the kind of uh, activist, busy as an activist, because during uh, seven years, um, the first seven years, hemp was illegal there. So we had to struggle for uh, to give it another reputation and to um, bring um, hemp to the governor uh, to the to the let's say to the leading figures in the country we also organized the the first congress in morocco on the different possibilities what hemp can offer us oh um, wow so, uh, yes wow. yes uh, i i invited a lot of important figures uh, to that uh, from all around the world and i i was the one who, who did a program i was the one who did the program and who invited people from all parts of the world and that really was pushing but later the politicians didn't didn't follow that mm, but at the end hemp got uh, Mm, after, after uh, uh, many years after it got legalized in 2021, but now we have still a kind of, uh, let's say, that agency what organizes all that kind of um, legal farming of hemp is not operative yet, and we have somehow we still don't really know what we can really do and what we can't do. So um, I think it's at a point almost to uh, be created somewhere. Uh, and uh, we will try to make our activity legal by that. But um, I don't know if I agree with all the points of that law because some points um, are really misunderstanding the real circumstances, which I studied um, within something like 70 travels. I did 70 travels to Morocco in, in seven years uh, to... <laughs> To <laughs> know exactly the problematic behind that and the history and uh, well, why Morocco, Monica? Huh? Why Morocco? Why Morocco? Because uh, Morocco was calling me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Morocco was calling me in to, uh, end of 2013 to collaborate. Uh, co uh, it was uh, the, the civil so uh, society, the civil society of the hemp farming, historic hemp farming region was calling me to collaborate in the development of the region with hemp. Wow. So I, I, I came there and we started to initiate all kinds of trials to make that happen. And uh, it was a work of seven years um, let's, of activism to, to make the first projects happen. And, and mm. the first project was the entrance portal to the Mediterranean Climate Summit in Tangier. I think it was 2016. That was our first building. We made the entrance portal to the Climate Summit of HAMP. Uh, the, uh, it's completely massive hemp concrete, uh, a portal of five by five meters. And that was the entrance portal. It was a kind of, uh, let's say, <laughs> typical arc. Uh, and uh, then the second building was Sun Implant for the Expo Solar de Catalan Africa in, in, in the south of Morocco, but made already with Moroccan hemp, with our own Moroccan hemp, which is grown in the north. And the third building we do now at place in the hemp uh, in the hemp farming region and this building is in course i only couldn't finish it last year because of the corona travel restrictions yeah, because yes. morocco closes the border every uh, you know it opens close opens close opens close and you never know when you can come and when you <laughs> when you you can also you also take the risk that you go there and they close the border and you can't come out <laughs> i agree um in our particular case in australia we opened the border yesterday after two years, believe it or not. Yes, yes, yes. So and I also days. was uh, during 2021, I couldn't travel to Morocco. That's the only year. But I still was working from here. And yeah. I was interviewed for the... Um, no, that's something secret. I can't uh, talk about it. Uh, I, I still was pushing forward 
our aim to uh, to make industrial hemp legal in Morocco. Mm -hmm. So um, I didn't stop working. I always uh, since 2013. I non-stop do things for Morocco, and I didn't earn one penny with that. I oh, think wow. there are l very few people who would, uh, because nowadays people only look on busyness. But you can't work like that when you like to do something positive for the world. You mm -hmm. First, the first idea you need to push forward, um, it's a risk, you know? You, you think you, it will happen, otherwise you would not do it, you know? Um, um, you you must go forward uh, thinking that it will happen, but Monica, uh, you also must sacrifice something. You Monica, um, yeah. I listen to you. Um, yeah. I uh, two days ago I had a, a rant, and I told my business partners that I this business is drain, draining me. I don't find, uh, they are not finding the proper support to grow in the, in the velocity that I would love to. And I was mm -hmm. thinking for the, for the first time in, you know, it's slowing down and or moving away from him. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you this um, quite honestly, Monica. Mm -hmm. I joined this, I learned about hemp in 2016 and I, and I founded Hemp Engineering in 2018. Mm. 2019, 2019. But basically always uh, trying to give the knowledge of project management for large scale projects. Mm. And, okay. and I listen to you, then something, once again, I find a spark <laughs> that I think I lost it. Thank you, Monica, because I, I was ready just to to say everybody go to hell, I don't care because <laughs> most of the people, if you're so right, most of the people are just thinking in, in, in focusing in making the money, not making sacrifice, everybody wants to make a quick buck. And you can't really, I mean. The most it, unsustainable is to use only a part of the hemp plant. Exactly. Because when it, that's, exactly. That's Excellent. also what is practiced in Morocco since a few. Um, let's Look, say, our, our dream, or my personal dream, is that we can build the frames and windows out of plastic hemp. Yes, it already exists. That that's a possible. Yes. Mm -hmm. All the conduits, all the pipelines. The that's only thing okay. that I that I know of that we cannot build the windows, but basically we have the whole technology to do that. No, my... no, I think I, I think I know a, a company what is recently um, created in in uh, in North America somewhere I don't know where they make kind of kind of hemp boots and they also make kind of furnitures and the frames what look like window frames so I think that it's possible absolutely and you yes. maybe maybe you also can invent a new kind of window it doesn't need to be the classical window you understand what I mean. <laughs> I think you can even make from hemp transparent uh, sheets what look like glass. Uh, they are not exactly transparent like glass, but they let the light come through. Well, then uh, if that is the case, and we have the whole technology to build the home completely out of hemp. Yes, and yes, in, a, yes. in addition my, to that, in addition to that, that's what I was uh, already with my project Final Career as an architect uh, in, in 1995. I was presenting exactly that. Do all the all the parts from a building with hemp, but I never arrived to do a building completely with hemp. Now, let's say, let's say, um, ninety percent or. Uh, oh, ninety percent is extraordinary, uh, you know. In this. Oh, um, yes, uh, I think maybe it's even exaggerated because. But uh, the ultimate dream, but, Monica, the ultimate dream is to include in every home, hemp home, our hemp battery. Um, yes, that's uh, that's uh, something very exciting. I was reading about that. Yeah. Yes, Car mm -hmm. Mr. Car Martel is is uh, is part. I know of... him. I know him. I know him. Well, there yeah. he goes. Then, so he is yes. the brain behind this project. Um, he okay. works mm -hmm. uh, um, with us in another company that is called Biomass Engineering. We are four mm -hmm. four guys there. Well, okay. three guys and one girl. Um, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And we are, I guess, that's the only project that I'm actually pushing to happen. Uh, we, mm -hmm. are, I'm, I'm a true believer that every hemp home must have a hemp battery. And that's okay. targeting all the energies 
now mm -hmm. for the future to come. As, mm -hmm. as what I personally want as an engineer, and I want mm -hmm. this to be the contribution of my, of my life to, of the rest of my life, I would say. I'm I, about I to be 60 years old in this coming month. So mm -hmm. um, I just want to leave something behind. <laughs> That's what There's I- So many interesting things, but you can't follow them all together, you know, because all you have a team with experts. One is the expert in the architectural field. One is yes. the expert in the hand batteries. One is yes. the expert in, uh, let's say, uh, the, the, the car industry or, you know, uh, so many fields hemp can uh, be useful applied. Um, it's impressing, yeah. Yes. Um, Yes, and um, these interviews and those expos that I that I do, and mm -hmm. I do it mostly for hobby or for support or education, but mm -hmm. definitely uh, yeah, I'm a true believer that him can change the world. That's that's what I felt when I learned about this plan. Change plant. the world, maybe. I don't know if change the world is something maybe a little bit exaggerated, better the world. I would say better the world because change the world. Uh, this world goes so much back that it is very difficult to, you know, it for one step better, it makes two step worse, actually. And, <laughs> and uh, it's a big lie because everything is business nowadays. When the world started to only think about business, I think the world went like this because uh, animals, for example, they don't think about business. And animals create beautiful environment, beautiful architecture, beautiful. Uh, they 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 don't destroy the nature. I never saw an animal destroying the nature. I don't know if that maybe some parasites or something can destroy uh, what human beings created, but. Mm, I don't think they are so destructive than the human being. The human being is the most destructive uh, um, living uh, being. Mm, being on the world. So, uh, but it is, uh, I think, since the Industrial U uh, Revolution, the human being got much more destructive than it was before. Before, maybe nature made some catastrophic uh, events on the world, but human beings. I think uh, since the uh, uh, industrial revolution, since the invention of, of cement, because cement is also something, oh, that I is mean, cement, cement concrete is something what you find everywhere on the world. I, I never went somewhere on the world where I didn't find cement. It's, um, and and, and it, it is destroying aesthetically and also envi environmentally everything. And uh, as long that goes on like that, and uh, it goes one step forward and two step backwards, I don't think that we save the world. Mm, we can only better the world, or we can try to mm, make make that this happens not so quick anymore than uh, than uh, than in the past. Let's say like extraordinary so light, uh, extraordinary lady. I am so honored uh, interviewing you and so inspiring, <laughs> Monica, quite honestly, from the bottom of my heart. And Thank if you, you had the opportunity to send a message to the decision makers, what would you mm -hmm. tell them? Uh, that they let us, that they make us, uh, that they make it possible for us to use mainly plant-based insulating materials in, in construction. And uh, to make some laws or some uh, that that make uh, make us uh, eliminate all the contaminating materials piece piece by piece. I also understand that can't happen from today to tomorrow. That ne needs to be done step by step. But uh, they need to help uh, these kind of new industries from plant-based materials to grow quicker than the others uh, and, and and to be real competitive to the others uh, because uh, they are still uh, the most people use still um, synthetic and mineral insulating materials and uh, uh, it's just because they are also much more available the builders know how to use them there's a lot of there's needed um, funding for 
the retrofit of energetic retrofit of um, traditional housings uh, because a lot of traditional housings need to be retro they are only compatible with natural building materials because they are made from natural ma ma building materials and i i'm really a friend of uh, traditional architecture vernacular architecture because it's also a kind of natural building i actually live in a cave what you see here behind me is a cave i live under the earth like like oh, an insect <laughs> <laughs> I live like I'm a monk. I'm an extraordinary woman. <laughs> <laughs> because it's 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 the only living you don't need materials for. All. <laughs> you don't need materials for that. And the break I make from hemp is made of the materials where the where the cave buildings get restored. When when the cave building gets restored, we gain clay. And these clay are used in the hemp bricks. Uh, so the materials what other people throw away, I use. I use their waste. And mm -hmm. in Morocco, I use the waste of the hemp for to build because people burn it actually because they mm -hmm. only use the upper parts of the plants. They only use the, the uh, cannabinoids and the rest is for them trash. Right. You know? And yeah. I learned them to use that also and to make a value from that and to restore their buildings with that because they have fantastic vernacular architecture. And uh, I try to learn them to use that instead of to buy things, to use that to um, uh, give an added value to their vernacular architecture, for example, for tourism or for let's a museum or for, for anything. Mm. Uh, they can uh, use it. Touristic activities would be interesting, but not this kind of mass tourism. I mean, this kind of, uh, let's say, sensible tourism, uh, eco ecotourism, uh, you know, um, people which, which are respective with what they find in an area. Um, that's why, where we are working, <laughs> where we were working on in the last past years. Uh, and I hope that can happen soon. What a great pleasure, Monica. Really. What a great pleasure these minutes. Igualmente, igualmente. Yeah, Muchas yeah. gracias. Y yeah, de nada, saludos, a, <laughs> saludos a todas las partes del mundo, incluso América Latina, etc. Um, uh, sí. yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm very happy to see this hemp thing getting important now, but uh, I really want to give a message, a last message, that please be respective with this plant. Don't use it only for your business. Think about yes. sustainability, real sustainability, and not uh, blah, blah, blah sustainability. Don't use sustainability for to sell or for to market your product. Yes. Uh, create a real sustainable business. Otherwise, you will exist a few years, and then you, then others will blow you away. <laughs> it's, you. it's like that, you know? So. Monica, um, thank you very much. I have no words to express what I have in this moment in my chest. No and I want to keep in touch with you and I want to officially invite you for okay. our upcoming summits and events okay. that, are, that will be happening in the next coming month, okay. especially the one in Africa. I'm very sure okay. you're, gonna, okay. you're going to be a blast there. And then the one in America Latina as well, okay. you gotta be there. <laughs> You gotta be there. Okay. Telling you. you are a light, Monica. Thank you very much. Thank you um, very much. And wow. uh, see you. I hope to meet you uh, somewhere on the world once. <laughs> yes, uh, yeah, I'm very sure we will meet very soon. I, okay, I thank you very you. much. <laughs> thank you very thank much, you. Monica. Thank you. Thank you. Ciao. Bye. And thanks for doing this. Bye. I mean, ciao.